Here I'd like to show you more advanced details about painting with Vertex Painter. The first thing I want to show you is some of the materials. So here we've got uh, the blend shader, and there's a couple variations on the blend shader. Uh, you can see here in Fair Blend, we've got a couple of different things. The standard one, which is uh, a blend shader for the Unity standard um, shader. We have unlit variations, unlit transparency, uh, as well as some of the legacy lighting models that Unity used to use uh, previously. Um, and you can see here, it's it should look uh, pretty similar to, to what you remember. The uh, different the, the only difference here is, is some of the options up top, as well as uh, some of the extra channels. So uh, first of all, you can see red channel, green channel, blue channel. These each map to one of the colors on the mesh. So you can see the, these green vertices map to the green channel of that particular material. Um, uh, same thing with the blue channel. Now you can have uh, up to four different textures on your blend material. So two, three, four, you just select it when creating your, your material. And uh, obviously fewer is better um, because you'll be running less operations in your shaders. Um, I have a couple different blending modes. Uh, the first one is height. Uh, and so if your uh, texture has height information in it, you can see here that uh, these textures have height information encoded in their alpha channel. Um, then it will use that height to blend um, between the different textures. So you can see uh, as I do this, um, it will fill in the cracks first because they have a lower height value than the uh, these rocks do. Uh, and so you get a, a height-based blending, which looks a little bit more realistic. Uh, you can also do a hard blend, which just kind of takes it and blends between them without any sort of height data, uh, which is great if you don't have that height data. Uh, or you can just do a soft one, um, which just blends between them softly. And, and so you'll probably paint a little bit differently with this, maybe higher strength values to get uh, more solid colors here. And so that can be great for, for like if you just want to add details to your um, um, textures instead of uh, completely changing some of the material. Um, We've also got uh, UV mode. Um, so by default, it uses the regular UVs. But if you have uh, an environment where uh, maybe you have a lot of painting for ground sort of work to go, then you can change this to world coordinates. And uh, the scale is a little different since it takes it directly from the, the world. However, um, if I turn off painting move and move this around, you can see here that those textures stay exactly uh, where they are. So if you have um, more than one of these and you want to line them up, then these are always going to line up perfectly um, any time that you've got them hooked up together. So you can see there's absolutely no seam there. So really, really great if you're just trying to uh, paint some like roads or uh, ground in your game. Um, so that's blend painting. Uh, lots of options there. Uh, another painting mode that we have here is flow painting. And uh, so this is using a flow material. Um, and you'll notice that when I select this, uh, it shows up here as flow rather than blend. And if I wanted to, I could override this to a different uh, painting tool. But this is the flow tool. And so when I have this open, you can see the, the data is a little bit changed. It shows a direction and strength and all that. Uh, so if I drag it in this direction, you can see that uh, the magma begins to flow in that direction instead. Uh, and so that allows me to paint all sorts of um, like currents and eddies in the water. Um, Or, or swirls or anything like that. Uh, you, you'll also notice that the traditional color picker is gone and instead there is a flow speed. So if I if I crank this all the way up, then I'll have a much faster moving magma uh, and I'll probably want to tr turn the strength down. That way these edges aren't so harsh, but um, you can see there faster flowing lava. Or I can turn this all the way down to get 
uh, absolute stillness in some of these sections here. And so this is really great for, for water or currents or rivers or stuff like that where you have this motion on your surfaces. Okay. And so this is also based off of the standard shader. I have a couple of others, uh, legacy-based lighting as well as unlit. Um, so you should see a lot of familiar options there. Uh, and the last one that I want to show you is the uh, just vertex color. This is really easy stuff. Um, it's just showing raw vertex color data on top of a, a standard object. So you can see if I, if I do a color picking, paint here, then I just get these beautiful colors on top of everything. And so this is, well, I'm not exactly sure where you would use it, but um, I'm sure there's plenty of options if you have like just tinting that you want to do to some of your textures or uh, perhaps toss in a little bit of lighting or um, just variation on the surfaces. Uh, another thing I'd also like to show you uh, while we're here is um, you can see on this one we have a restore mesh component and so when you start painting on an object in Fair Vertex Painter it will add this component automatically with a link to the original mesh. Since Fair Vertex Painter modifies the mesh itself uh, there becomes issues when say you want to um, change the model that it's attached to. So if you had uh, a model that you painted on and then you updated it in your editing software, um, if you go back into Unity, it's not going to update right away because this has its own procedural mesh here that it's modified. It took an original copy of your mesh, made changes to it, and it now stores that. However, it keeps a link to the original mesh so if you do update yours, you can say here, refresh mesh. And what that'll do is it'll grab the mesh from your asset, take the colors here, and attempt to map these colors onto the new map. And it's pretty smart about this. If it's anywhere near spatially, then it'll work just fine. Um, and so there I just took the original sphere mesh and reapplied the colors to it. Nothing changes because it's pretty good about that, especially since it's still the same uh, positions. However, if you say revert mesh, this will just take the original mesh and completely overwrite it. Um, so those are both options that you get, and that can be really nice for uh, keeping your assets up to date. All right, and so this is some of the material data. Uh, there's going to be more updates here in the future since shaders are kind of a, the big thing. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for more news.